Our destination, Kangsu Suak, Center Stormfjord, is uh, reporting of uh, easterly winds. Good visibility, no clouds are detected with a temperature of minus 4 degrees on the centigrade scale. Our alternate airport today for Sonnerstrom is actually Keflavik, uh, which is a almost one hour flight from Sonnerstrom. Then we check the SIGMETs and we can see today that we have on the east coast of Gre uh, Greenland, we had some, um, some has uh, observed some severe turbulence uh, in this area, which uh, we plot into a map and it's uh, between flight level 270 and flight level 400. Since we're heavy, we cannot fly above it, so uh, this is um, actually uh, affecting our flight. So this, of course, have my attention for the planning. And this is also, again, with the extra fuel if we need to circumnavigate this area. When we have this uh, information about aircraft status, payload, um, weather, and no time, then we can decide any threats today, should they have more fuel, any other special uh, needs. So a lot of people um, would say uh, to fly to a thunderstorm is a very exotic, and it is, it is in some way um, a threatful environment because you are remote, there's not so many airports, you have Thule in the north which you're not allowed to go to, you have Nassasuak in the south. And I recall uh, when I was a new first officer, it was very on my, uh, very uh, alert to everything and you're still alert, but it's the things that uh, happened before they happened that you uh, see when you have been there for 100, 200 times. It's the same with Sonnerstrom, it's um, actually a very easy airport to operate. I think they only have, I think it's five to 10 days a year where the weather can be a, a threat. The only thing is that it's remote, so you need to have the fuel for Keflavik. Because if things change so fast, you cannot be back to operations to get them to come with what you have to do. You have to take, make the decision and get on with it. Yeah. Because we don't have uh, very many uh, alternates, so you are you don't have time to, to have the discussions. Most of our flights are anyway between 15 minutes up to three hours, but a lot of them is uh, less than 45 minutes. Yeah. And that's a long way to your nearest alternate makes a big difference. Yeah, you don't have radio contact with them anyway, so... Hey, yeah. uh, when, when you're up north, uh, the other day we went to Karnak all the way up, and you just... out of everything, you can't... I mean, the phone doesn't work, nothing, so it's... when you have, if you have a problem, you just sort it, and then get on with it. So you have to, to really to be into the weather and understand how to analyze it, because that's the thing that gets you here. Another fun little bit this aircraft can do is basically we have a bunch of overlay functions and symbol functions on the map so we can select um, navigation aids, VORs, and uh, we can, uh, well this doesn't have an ADF receiver but we, ca we can also do the NDBs all the airports, but of course if you select all of them you make it a little bit too cluttered so the company standard is usually this and then you get sort of the closest which is also good if uh, for whatever reason you need to divert you can uh, check the runway length and there's a little bit of information about the airport some basic stuff so you kind of always know what, uh, what's around you and where you can go if uh, you run into some trouble so Boeing and Airbus are sort of polar opposites in that sense that uh, they have different philosophies. Boeing is much more hands-on and uh, obviously manual and uh, Airbus is much more automated and at times excludes the pilots a little bit. So this is great because this is kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, you have all this automation going on but uh, it always includes the pilot in what it's doing which is nice. Even, even when you fly it manually it still feels like a real aircraft. So as you can see, we're right now up at 390, which is where we're going to stay until Riga, basically. And we got about one hour, ten-ish left until we start our descent. We can uh, climb down flight level 390 or as fouled out by 366. Between 380 and 
regular ones but something uh, they call RNPAR which means authorization required uh, that means that the equipment uh, the uh, the flight crew need to be certified so we need to have some extra training for that and uh, the benefit of the AR approaches is that uh, you can design them in a manner that you can use for noise abatement purposes and for continuous descent so basically this is going to be a nice curve and uh, we're going to be rolling out at exactly 1,000 feet, which is our stabilization gate. So it's less track miles, therefore more efficient and uh, less noise for the folks that uh, live in the area. 14710 regular control. Good day. I think I'm passing flight level 200. which goes through Bacto and Aston and then over to the NDB Delta Alpha over at Kulusuk. So we'll be crossing um, Taishi there. It's like a direct flight from uh, from Nuuk to Kulusuk. Nice. Flight level 25, so capture. Yes. Coffee anyone? No, if I Two have a boxed cafe or a burner cafe. <laughs> Boxen, kaffe, sort kaffe. Good to see you. Yes, also, yes, also in me milk and sugar. Kaffeevik will be from Kulusuk over to Nasab, Nonro, Inken, and then probably to Inken and then down to Valux or Visux to one of the initial approach fixes. It's hard to mail to see. You can really see the ice sheet now. With the light? Oh yeah. So much to see and no turbulence and oh, just a nice day. Yeah. Uh, yesterday I was thinking while I was driving home that well, that was what we get paid for, you know. Um, gusty winds, downdrafts, and turbulence, and like landing where the the weather is challenging and doing it safely. Let's put the harness on for a while just in case it gets rough. Right? turbulence because we are in the ace area. Yeah. And the strong winds of course as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's jet stream on top of weather. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. But it is quite usual as as, as we cross the uh, in, in these areas. Oceanic area, and then we are entering the uh, uh, anchorage control at airspace. And uh, over here, we are entering US uh, domestic air, airspace, Alaska is over here, and the Russian comes over here. And we will cross actually many of those two countries towards the uh, North Pole, and then heading. Uh, on the uh, 
Agrid Arctic area and some uh, 60 miles, 40 miles actually west of, of North Pole down towards Norway. Now there is some uh, northern lights forming up on the horizon. Can you see the slight uh, glimpse of, of, of oh, green? Yeah, right there, yeah. yeah. So the aircraft has got its first birthday present. I'm kind of curious, is there any difference from the A330CO in terms of what you're looking at yes. in the display? Yeah? We have this uh, finger touch. We can swap a... Uh, that's really, really okay, uh, yeah. cool. Oh, nice. It's on the Neo. Cool. Anything else? Uh, we're from Greenland, so they promised us, uh, no, they didn't promise, but we ordered it with winter tires. It's very convenient. Nice. You have the studs on there? He's <laughs> Greenland. <laughs> <laughs> we have an uh, autopilot flight director t -CAS. We have the soft go around uh, mode. We have the one day over on. Uh, oh. Not overrun, one way uh, warning and one way uh, overrun uh, protection uh, system. This particular aircraft is designed to, to go for like 12 hours, so we can have 109 tons of fuel on board. Now we only go or fly for 4 hours, which means we are lightweight. Mm -hmm. So when we leave Copenhagen, we are normally no more than 210 to 215 tons, with a full load of passengers, the necessary fuel and the cargo we have for the day. So we have uh, asked for a weight variant 806. It's very geek, nerdish, but a weight variant 806, uh, and this is the first one to get it actually, is 215 tons of takeoff, mm. which is all we need. So we don't pay for more than we use, which also means we don't have to pay the overfly, landing, and takeoff fees. Uh, for more than 215 tons. Wow, and that's a paperwork issue. It's nothing. Nothing happens no, to the no. aircraft. It's, it's it's a real paperwork issue. <laughs> I flew. A300, uh, 310, 320, 330, 40, 50, 80, and to be honest, this is the best they did. The best cockpit, not only the cockpit, it's uh, extremely efficient, but the redundancy is extremely good. So I think it's also a, a good progress in flight safety. It's very responsive, direct on the controls, just the way you like it as a pilot. The flat plan you could see here on, on the screen on the OIS. Uh, do it a little closer here. We started there in Munich, then we passed the Alps, and this is our present position. So uh, on the right hand side there would be uh, Milano, and Genoa will Genoa coming up pretty soon, and then the Mediterranean, 
this is course, and this is Palma de Mallorca. Flight time today, as we're doing a, a straight in, is uh, 1.40. And luckily we are pretty light, so we, we choose through uh, 4.30 as a cruising flight level. Lufthansa 59 Whiskey, fly heading 245. Your wings 5905, descent of flight level 360, 1000, no more. 1000 more, it's now 134605. Good weather on Madeira at the moment. Plan X 52 Uniform Tango on navigation to Hochwald. East of the wind, 7 knots. To, uh, uh, 24 here. degrees, beautiful. Madeira is quite zero, three, five, five, quite variable, yeah, so it's back, always back, exciting back. until you actually are there because uh, the wind can shift, shift a lot and, and you have, for Madeira, you have quite strict wind limits and from certain directions. And uh, I can show you here on the map. This blade like this. Here you have the, the wind sectors and from the direction of this sector, for instance, today the wind is coming from 100 that means it's coming from this sector, so we have the normal uh, Airbus uh, manufacturer limit of 35 knots. But as soon as the wind gets out of, uh, comes out from one of those sectors, the Portuguese authorities have limited the winds, so that means if it comes the sector between 20 and 40, the maximum wind is 20 knots and the gusts may not exceed 30 knots and uh, those are quite strict and uh, also the controllers will not issue a landing clearance until the wind goes above this threshold. So sometimes you have days where the wind really plays piano on our nerves and moves in the direction inside, outside and uh, tends to stay around 20 knots, 21 knots, 19 knots, so it always stays they said it's uh, like like a, a, a thriller, you know. <laughs> I've been flying to Madeira. I have the, the license since 2008. Yeah, almost 14 years of uh, Madeira flying. And at the moment, uh, this season, we're flying it three times a week, which uh, gives us a lot of practice. Now, well, the authorities they they require commanders who fly to Madeira to have the license that means you uh, have to have a minimum amount of hours as a PIC and you need to have a, a simulator instruction and run about two hours, four hours and then you need with Lufthansa company also a, 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 a flight with a, with a trainer who shows you the airport live after the simulator and uh, if you have all this then your license will be, all the license data will be sent to the Portuguese authorities and then you're actually being, you'll be on to entered on a list, and this list is with the Portuguese authorities, so they really know all the names of all the commanders who fly to Madeira. Yeah, it's, it's a different airport. It's something else. Okay, so we might change, ma. Done. Ma, ma, I have control, you have RT. Yep, you have okay. control. And uh, we're already switching the positions. He did the takeoff, because from now on it's my my leg, as we say, because later on I do have to do, do the landing and do have to take do the takeoff, but uh, so that Simon gets his takeoff and landing, he did the takeoff in Munich and will do the landing later on this evening. Yeah. Weather in Geneva is good, okay. just a few clouds, wind in one way direction, and Toulouse and Geneva also. Our main goal is to always have a plan B if, if something dynamic happens now, if, if there's a medical uh, situation uh, maybe behind or even a technical situation which which would uh, require us to do a really quick fast landing so we already, already have a mental picture of where we would go to now and at this point it would be Geneva and uh, our work is 90% for the paper basket because uh, we will fly to Madeira, we don't want to land in Geneva, but uh, this is good airmanship to always have a good uh, plan for you.